Well, for the first time in Crown Jewel history, I feel like this was a, an absolute waste of time. This entire show. Um, and we're going to talk about it. I'm going to give you the results. I'm going to give you my review. But there was two bangers on the card. But even them bangers was pointless. Guys, I'm JB Gunner. This is Heel Nation. We're going to talk about 2024's WWE Crown Jewel and how this whole fucking day was a waste of my time. Good, good. What's going on, everybody? As you guys know, I'm JB Gunner, and this is Heel Nation. Uh, now, before we get into the results, I just want to say thank you to everybody that supports the channel, uh, any of my channels, regardless of platform, regardless of uh, method you choose, whether it's Cash App, Patreon, Venmo. Truth is, guys, I couldn't do this each and every day as often as I do on all these different channels for the last 18 years if it wasn't for you. Thank you so much. If you too find my content valuable, feel free to hit the links down below. Support the channel. Guys, uh, we're just going to jump right on into this, all right? I'm not going to take up too much of your time. It's Saturday. People want to get to doing what they're doing. Um, I know there's other podcasters who do long-form reviews. Each and every move of the matches, go watch them. Uh, Silent Monsters, Pretty solid. All right, but let's go ahead and get into the results if you want to get them quick, if you want to get my quick take. Um, guys, every typical crown jewel has major happenings, usually because WWE wants to put on a good show for the Saudis. They treat it like a secondary WrestleMania. This was definitely not the case. They did up the matches from five to seven, but not really because one of the matches didn't even start or count. And we'll talk about that as well. So let's just jump right in. By the way, I give this entire card, this entire show, below average a B, I mean a C minus or D. No question about it. Now, there was some good moments, and I will tell you, but let me start off by saying there was absolutely no surprises in this show. There was no Bill Goldberg. There was no new uh, Bloodline member. There was no nothing when it comes to this show. It was, uh, and, and, and by the way, I've never saw a Bloodline match that sucked, but we did start off the night with a Bloodline match, Bloodline versus Bloodline, and this match was fucking horrible. That's the match we're going to start with. We had Roman Reigns, Jimmy Uso, Jey Uso, step into the ring with Solo Sokoa, uh, 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 Jacob Fatu, and uh, Tama Tonga. So, Tonga Loa was on the outside. Guys, there was so many fucking botches and mis mishaps in this matchup. I don't even know what the fuck to say. I don't even know what to say. And why does Jacob Batu keep... Like, this is his catchphrase. Just all throughout the match. Uh, Solo, I love you. Man, you sound like an autistic... Re the autistic retarded motherfucker of the bloodline. There's something wrong with you. I, I love Jacob Batu. But for some reason, he got a good reaction with that Jacob, uh, Solo, I love you. And then every, he says it in every fucking match every time he's out there. And he repeated it no less than five times tonight. And it just sounds retarded. It sounds autistic. It sounds dumb as fuck. I don't understand it. But anyway, Roman Reigns, he, he was the only highlight. And even he looked slow. He's the only star in the whole match. Jimmy Uso, so let, let, let's just go. Okay, so obviously we had the bloodline in. The bloodline did not come out together. Jay and Roman came out together. And on the other side, of course, the, the, the new bloodline, they all came out together. I just want to say this. I think that what they're doing is killing off Roman Reigns, and that is pathetic and horrible. And they're doing it for the benefit of fucking Jay Uso. Guys, let's just say, all right, these they didn't come out together. Jey Uso had to have the longest entrance. He comes through the crowd, does his little bullshit. I don't know why he's over, because he sucks in the fucking ring. And, and he actually made Jimmy Uso suck in the ring. And he made this whole fucking match suck in the ring. I can sit here and tell you about all the botches from the from the from the Tongans, from Solo, from um, Roman Reigns is the only one I don't remember actually botching. But the the the, the action was so slow and weak. It made Roman Reigns look slow and weak during the match. And this is where we had our first issue. 
um, actually storyline wise. So Roman Reigns wanted in the match. Jay U to start the match. Jay U was like, no, no, let me start. Oos. Roman Reigns was like, cool, man. So Jay Uso, this whole thing was Jay Uso proving that he doesn't have to listen to Joe, Roman Reigns. So much so, I feel like he didn't even work with Roman Reigns. It was a heel move by Jay Uso. Jay Uso wanted to start the match. They got into, they tagged in Jimmy, blah blah blah, blah. and then uh, Roman Reigns or Jay Uso came back into the match later on uh, after J- J- Jimmy Uso tagged him. And Roman Reigns didn't even come into the match through the first. 75% of the match And then there was one period of time Where J- Jey Uso Had, I can't remember, I think it was Solo, and brought him over To the corner, and Roman Reigns Was like, let me in, let me in Jey Uso shook his head, no Tagged in Jimmy, and then Jimmy Came in, Roman Reigns is like, what the fuck Jimmy Uso even said to Jay, What the fuck, and so You know I understand what they're trying to do there, but I actually think throughout this, they're killing Roman Reigns. By trying to make Roman Reigns a good guy, you're killing him off. Right now, you basically, what you have with Roman Reigns is Roman Reigns looking like a bitch to Jey Uso. Jey Uso, you, fine, he doesn't want to be his right-hand man. Fine, he doesn't want to be all that. But you cannot turn Roman Reigns into a weak bitch himself. This new theme music sucks, takes too long to get to the Roman Reigns beat drop and all of this. I don't know what the fuck that is they're doing in the beginning of Roman Reigns' theme song since his return, but it fucking sucks. And then when you get to the, like I said, the actual match, Jimmy Uso himself was a botch machine. Jimmy Uso completely sucked in this matchup. And when Jimmy and Jay, to pop the crowd, would try to do teamwork together, they would always do this little silly jive shit where they would wiggle their little arms, come back together, do this little double smack. It just was horrible. As Roman Reigns stood on the corner. So when Roman Reigns eventually did get the tag in, he, he, there was no rhythm to this match. Roman Reigns' Superman punch looked off. Everything looked off. Um, there was a moment, right, where Solo Sokoa, Samoan Spike Roman Reigns, pinned him, and Jimmy Uso was supposed to break up the pin. Jimmy Uso did not break up the pin. There was the one, the two, and the ref looked over, and then Jimmy Uso broke up the pin. Barely. Jimmy Uso did not break up that pin. It was a complete botch. Solo Sokoa beat Roman Reigns twice. There's your spoiler. Because in the end, Solo Sokoa beat Roman Reigns clean. Clean. With two Samoan spikes, the fucking Usos were just pathetic. Just completely pathetic. Roman Reigns looks horrible and weak after this match. Solo Sokoa beat him clean in the ring twice. And I understand the bloodline had to get this win so they look good. But to have Solo just flat out overpower Roman, beat him in the center of the ring with really just clean, it makes no sense to me. So then they start jumping him. Okay, and I don't know if you guys caught this, but Jimmy Uso's down there by the steps looking and waiting. And so they get all in the ring, everything, everybody's in the ring. And the person that that comes out to to help the bloodline, the OG bloodline, of course, was Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn comes out with this Arab looking bullshit, uh, gets into the ring. And there's this big moment where everybody's like, who's he going to choose? Who's he going to help? He uh, he uh, he ends up. Suplex and Solo Sokoa. They're in all four corners. Solo Sokoa is on his own. Uh, they, they took out the rest of the bloodline, the new bloodline, easily. So you have each one of the OG bloodline in a, in a corner. They're staring at Solo Sokoa. And I texted my buddy Upgrade, and I said, Sammy's going to halluva kick Roman Reigns. And that's exactly what ha- happened. Uh, he went for the halluva kick. Solo rolled out the ring. He kicked Roman Reigns in the face. Sami Zayn ends up leaving. Clearly, they're, they're causing the, 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 the Usos and Roman Reigns to not work together well. And I understand this is part of the storyline. The Sami Zayn shit was the best part, and it was post-match. Honestly, I think Sami Zayn is going to turn on them at War Games. I think Sami Zayn is going to turn heel at War Games. I, I don't know why. It's just a gut feeling. I almost thought he was going to turn heel tonight. They did the post-match very, very well. 
Uh, Roman Reigns took the Luba kick well. Everything was well. But the match itself was horrible, a botch fest. I give it a fucking D. It was the worst bloodline I've match I've seen in the entire four years of the bloodline's existence. Yes, it progressed the story if you want to include the Sami Zayn shit. It progressed the story if you want to um, uh, include uh, Jey Uso's, his reluctance to tag in Roman and his basically laying, basically trying to prove that he's not his little buddy anymore. Yeah, but I'm a, everybody sucked here. Jacob, Jacob Fatu was the best in the ring tonight. No question today, no question about that. Jacob Fatu was the best in the ring, but like I said, the it's retarded as fuck. That whole match kicked out the pay-per-view and was garbage. It just was garbage. I don't I, so no. Um no, I give the match a D. Probably a D. On a grading scale, right? And then we move on. The next match was the Women's Tag Team Championship Fatal 4-Way. I don't understand the purpose of having this match on the card if you weren't going to crown new tag team champions. By the way, in that initial bloodline match, I picked the heel bloodline to win, so I was 1-0 there. And if you, were, if you saw the video before this. Now, the next match was the Women's Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Championship match. This match fucking sucked, too. This was definitely a bathroom match. It just completely sucked. The crowd was dead. Nobody wanted to see these motherfuckers. There wasn't anything worth a shit in the whole match. You know, I picked Chelsea Green and, and Piper Niven going in. The only team in this thing that really looked good was Damage Control. But of course, what they I don't understand the purpose of having this match on the pay-per-view if you're just why couldn't it have been on SmackDown if you're just going to have uh uh, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill retained the titles. Just the match itself sucked. People was crying on Twitter. How come nobody shows the ladies any love? Because they motherfucking suck. Because they suck. And let me tell you something. In my opinion, and this is going to piss y'all off, this is going to be a room splitter. The only reason they even had this match on there is so you can have black females on the card. Because the Triple H and WWE is taking so much fucking heat. You can tell by watching this card, they try to get a little bit of everybody in this thing. If you look at that women's match, I'm surprised it didn't have a fucking uh, advertisement for Ros Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Because if you look at the referee, black female, two, four of the, the eight women were black females. Then you had, of course, the Asians and then the white uh, Europeans. Now, I'm only saying this. Because, in my opinion, this match specifically was just to have black talent. Because you already had a female match on the card. You already had a, a, a pretty solid female match on the card. So to have this eight-woman tag team match on a pay-per-view when there's no title about to change hands, to me, it smells of just pandering and basically telling everybody, look, we don't see color, we're not racist, we got these, these, these black broads on this motherfucker. The NXT black chicks, Jakar Jack and the metaphor, they fucking suck in the ring. And today, Carmel, uh, 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 Piper Niven and, and, and what's her name? Chelsea Green sucked in the ring as well. Like I said, the only people, Bianca Belair and, and Cargill sucked in the ring. The only women that were actually any fucking good was Damage Control, which was EO Sky and Kyrie Saint. But they, of course, had Damage, or, um, the champs retained the titles. The entire match was pointless and it sucked. There was botches galore on this fucking thing too. So that put my record at one and one. Uh, then we move on. Uh, I, don't, I forgot which match was next, but I'm just going to go in line. Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton. I thought this was going to be a fucking banger. And uh, Actually, Seth Rollins was next, but let's just stick with Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. I thought this match was going to be a banger and it wasn't shit. I thought it wasn't shit. All it was was Kevin Owens hit a motherfucker with the chair before the match started. So the match never started at all. We just got robbed of this match for no fucking reason. I get it. They didn't want to job anyone out. But all this was was a fucking brawl. They were there were stuns and R, stunners and RKOs, the referees and and the general managers and all this shit. There really wasn't shit in this matchup because it wasn't a matchup. The match never fucking started. And basically, it ended with them out in the crowd. They went through a table. Kevin Owens with an uh, elbow drop through a table on Randy Orton. This was a zero to me. 
This was supposed to be one of the biggest and best matches on the card. Nothing, no surprises, no shit, no nothing. So we're three matches in. Not a goddamn surprise one other than Solo Sokoa beating Roman Reigns clean twice. And then, uh, of course, the, the tag team champions keeping. And then Roman Ra- I mean, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens, it was just a brawl. It was like it was just a... Remember the match with Stone Cold and Kevin Owens? It was basically that without any winner. There was, the, the match was called. It was a no contest. I, uh, now I'm wondering if they're going to try to do a triple threat at Saturday night's main event, which I don't understand. What the fuck is the problem here? That's probably where they're going to go. One of the bangers I knew would be a banger. So, by the way, I saw the Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, I give an F because it wasn't a fucking match at all. The women's match, I give an F. The, the bloodline match, I give a D. Everything's horrible so far. And guys, you know me. I don't call WWE wrestling, particularly pay-per-views, horrible that often. It's a rarity. I, uh, you know, I saved my the horrible statuses for the indie wrestling, the AEWs and shit like that. You know what I mean? But WWE, they, all right, so we did have a banger. Seth Rollins, Bronson Reed. I picked Bronson Reed because to me, what is the point in this goddamn match if you're not going to elevate Bronson Reed and have him go over? But there, and the announcers try to play it off because Seth Rollins won this match. Seth Rollins won this fucking match, which makes no sense to me. But let me say this. The announcers try to play it over like, win or lose, it shows that Bronson Reed deserves to be in the big time. Now, I do agree with that, but I think that's just a, that's just a cover-up for you not booking this properly. Bronson Reed needed to be the fucking monster that's winning. He needed this win. Seth Rollins did not need this win. I still think you could have Bronson Reed destroy him and have Becky Lynch come in and throw out the towel, the white towel, and that would have protected Seth Rollins from another loss. Seth Rollins, they said, hadn't wrestled since July. You could have put that into the storyline as the reason he was rusty and couldn't beat the, the monster. Great matchup, by the way, and I think Bronson Reed fucked up and fell on the steel steps and busted his eye open the hard way. That was a excellent image that was an excellent visual Bronson Reed at the end after all these stomp curb stomps one off the top rope and that's actually how he lost was a curb stop off the top rope um and basically after he had hit him with the splash Bronson had hit Seth with a splash and then went back up without covering him and then missed the second splash so uh, the storyline the storytelling and everything in this match was fantastic the match itself a plus Bronson Reed, Seth Rollins, A+. Plus. I give it an A+. Plus. But the booking, not putting Bronson Reed over is just insane to me. I hope they have something in store, something planned. And I understand Seth Rollins is probably going to go into a program with Punk, and so you don't want him to look weak. I get that. Since the match was such a banger, I will forgive the booking. But I still think Bronson Reed should have been put over and I know a lot of you say you don't have to win to be put over and that's very very true I just feel that this one Bronson Reed needed to go over maybe you agree maybe you don't but that was a banger 100% a banger then we're gonna go to the United States Championship match triple threat god damn I hate this fucking match but remember what I said in the preview if LA Knight did not win then his entire uh, title reign would have looked like shit. Basically, this was another matchup that was the same with Carmelo Hayes versus um, Andrade, which we've seen so many times. And this was LA Knight versus Andrade versus Carmelo Hayes in a triple threat match for the United States Championship. Basically, what we had in this matchup was Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade like we'd all seen with just LA Knight in it. And what this did, watching L.A. Knight in the ring with Carmelo Hayes and Andrade makes me realize how much L.A. Knight fucking sucks. L.A. Knight fucking sucks in the ring. He's a slower, older man, and Andrade and Carmelo just is the workhorses right now on SmackDown. No, no doubt about it. But everybody's bored of seeing Andrade and, L- uh, and Carmelo. So Andrade and Carmelo basically put in all the work. L.A. Knight did his very robot-like uh, spots 
almost busted his ass when he tried to run up the fucking, and he does this all the time, when he tried to run across the ring and up the turnbuckle to su superplex people. L.A. Knight just looked like complete shit. And he, as he always does, his in-ring performance is not good. Promos, he's good. The fans love him. I don't understand it. But he needed this win, and he got the win. L.A. Knight got the win. And the finish was actually really fucking good. Um, he, it's one of those things, you know, like they always say, Randy Orton catches the RKO out of nowhere. L.A. Knight was able to catch the BMT uh, out of nowhere. I believe it was on Carmelo. I don't remember. But it was a great, it was actually a great. Uh, Carmelo Hayes, Andrade su suffered the loss. Hopefully they'll no go have a, a, a regular seventh match, seventh game, so to speak. But look, man, this match was not impressive at all. I give it a C. I'll give it a C right there in the middle. Uh, Carmelo Hayes uh, and Andrade did what they always do. And L.A. Knight was just kind of the odd man out picking little spots and shit. And it was just, his moveset is so fucking boring. It's so plain. He's just not, he's just not good in the ring. L.A. Knight is just not good in the ring. Now, don't get me wrong. I think they needed to keep him champion because you have, look, man, you don't want to blow the opportunity with him as over as he is. You already did that kind of with Jey Uso by taking the two title off him. You don't want to do that with L.A. Knight. Because even though I don't know why these two guys are over, Jey Uso and L.A. Knight, they are over. And you want to take advantage of that shit and sell some merch. You know what I mean? That's just how it should go. But... This match was just okay. It's no different than a Raw match, SmackDown match. And that's how a lot of these matches were. When you go, now the Bloodline match felt big, but it wasn't. The women's Fatal 4-Way, that's just a fucking, that was a SmackDown match to me. You know what I mean? Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, that felt like a SmackDown or TV match to me because there wasn't no fucking match. Bronson Reed, Seth Rollins felt like a pay-per-view, and I like that. 100%. But this match right here, L.A. Knight, Andrade, this just felt like a, a, a television match. I wasn't really into it. What did feel like a pay-per-view, however, was Nia Jax versus Liv Morgan. We got the SmackDown champion against the Raw champion. Liv Morgan, in this matchup, I realized she fucking sucks. She can't wrestle worth a shit. And Nia Jax should be, if I, if I was booking this shit, Nia Jax would be women's champion for about five years. She's just bigger, stronger, better in the ring. Her Samoan drops look so fucking sweet. Like, Nia Jax is actually a really, really, really good, dominant-looking women's champion. But, of course, you know, I picked Liv Morgan to win this. I expected some fuckery. Uh, Tiffany uh, Stratton. She teased uh, cash in, but they didn't let Tiffany Stratton cash in. Tiffany Stratton has still not cashed in. Liv Morgan hit, hit her little finisher. It looked horrible on Nia Jax in the end. Because basically, uh, all the different, you know, interference, Raquel Rodriguez, Dom Mysterio, uh, Tiffany Stratton. It was just, it was so cluster, cluttered and shit. And now, it would have made sense if Tiffany Stratton would have cashed in the money in the bank. But they weren't going to do it, and I realized why, after, after the match. So Liv Morgan beat Nia Jax, which just was horrible. If anybody watched that in ring, there's no way anyone could possibly believe Liv Morgan should have won this match, even though I picked her to win it by, prior to the match. Nia Jax was simply the better in ring performer. Liv Morgan just looks so small, and she doesn't connect on her moves. She just sucks. And I like Liv Morgan as a personality, but she sucks. So anyway, Tiffany Stratton did not cash in. There was a lot of teases. Everybody thought she was going to. But the reason she didn't is because after these uh, crown jewel championship matches, they're going to do this. Like, like the, the thing is, they're going to bring in some Saudis and Triple H into the ring, and they're going to present the championship to the winner. So that took precedent over Tiffany Stratton doing some sort of post-match cash in. So Liv Morgan won. Nia Jax looked like the better wrestler. Tiffany Stratton, it was all the same old, same old teases. This match, I, look, I'll give it a C just because of Nia Jax. Um, but the constant, the constant teases of the cash in, the just, just, it just sucked, man. It just, it wasn't anything like I expected. 
So we still don't have a cash in, and there's just no surprises. Liv Morgan did, you know, show off with both championship belts. It just is what it is. Uh, so that match up. Uh, C, uh, not necessarily suck, but it was just average. It just, it just didn't feel. Like it just was. There was nothing there. Then we finally move on to the paper to the main event. This was the banger we all thought it would be. A plus plus plus. Cody Rhodes, SmackDown champion. Gunther, Raw champion. Both of these two men, banger. Exactly like I predicted in the in, in the prediction video. Cody Rhodes' chest was all chopped up. Let me just say this: Cody Rhodes has the weakest finisher in the game. Every opponent he has kicks out of his finisher ten fucking times. I don't understand it. You need a new goddamn finisher. So after this battle, they battled, they went back and forth. No Goldberg, by the way, no surprises, just a straight up battle. No bullshit, head to head. In the end, basically, you know, I did like that Cody kicked out of the powerbomb. Well, they, I don't know. They just got to stop kicking out of the fucking finishers. Just bottom line, best match of the night. Clearly, that and the Seth Rollins match. It was everything you could have wanted out of these two. It was very physical, just like I predicted. Perfect. No surprise, though. And now we know why. Because the uh, same reason as the other, the ladies' match, is they want to do the celebration. So, what happened? Um, Cody Rose went for the off-the-top rope Cody, Cody, Cody Cutter. Gunther caught him, put him in a sleeper, and then what Cody Rose did was the Bret Hart move where he flips over and pins him uh, that way. So, it, in my mind, that did protect Gunther and it protected Cody Rose. So, it was actually a good finish. I give the match five stars. I think the finish was great, protected everybody. Uh, and then Gunther did what I kind of thought he would do after I saw it. Gunther came in, shook his hand. I like that Gunther respects the mat. I think that's fucking great. So Gunther walks out, they do the ceremony, and then they bring in Liv Morgan. It's almost like they forgot the bitch was a heel. Liv Morgan and Cody Rhodes are hugging and holding each other's hands and raising the titles and getting on the, up the ropes together and pointing at each other with their titles. Like it's, it's almost like they forgot Liv Morgan was a fucking heel. All of a sudden, you got Liv Morgan, Cody Rhodes being cheered by the crowd. They're, they're like... Almost like they were tag team champs. And I'm just like, Liv Morgan's a heel dummy. This whole pay-per-view, man, shit. C minus D. Or I'm going to just give it a D. And maybe C minus. If it wasn't for the Seth match in the main event and the main event, this whole thing would be garbage. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Look, man, I, I'm not going to do play-by-play play for you. I gave you enough. Let me know what you guys th thought about this. Do you guys Are you guys in agree with me, agreement with me? This is one of the worst crown jewels that's ever existed. There was nothing, in my opinion, really furthered during this show. Let's look at the Bloodline storyline. Was anything really furthered? I guess if you look at, you know, J.U. Yeah, there was po the, the post-match of that match. Like I said, Sammy's now uh, involved. Leading up to war games, I think we all expected it. Jey Uso is a little too big, big for his britches, they, as they say. Women's Tag Team Championship, we didn't get shit. No story. Seth Rollins, Bronson Reed, yeah. Seth Rollins got the win in Bronson, basically looking like he uh, stood up, looking like he can't be stopped, blood dripping. He's basically saying it's not over, so... Yeah, and still no real continued story. Not really. Well, we're just going to get Seth versus Bronson again? Probably. Randy Orton KO. There's no real continuance there. They just brawled and there was nothing. There really isn't nothing. Uh, Nia Jax and Liv. Maybe if you want to consider the fact that, you know, Tiffany Stratton. It basically, it's the same goddamn story. Tiffany Stratton. Is gonna has teased she's gonna cash in and up, and Nia Jax is probably gonna blame her for the loss, shit like that. I mean, there's really no 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 furthering with anything there. Rhea Ripley's out with an injury, so Liv Morgan's storyline isn't really gonna do anything. Cody Gunther, respectable, no furtherance of storylines, no no nothing, no no Goldberg, no nothing. And L.A. Knight and the Triple Threat for the U.S. title didn't. I, I guess it could have maybe closed the storyline, but I don't feel like it did. 
I feel like Andrade and Carmelo still got to do their thing, and all this did was give LA Knight a pay-per-view win, and then he's just out of the scenario. This pay-per-view didn't do shit. Not a motherfucking thing. It was a waste of time. We're going to jerk off or fucking drink beer or something. You guys have a good day. <laughs>